Hi, I'm David Landwehr, a private practice endodontist from Madison, Wisconsin. I always assume that maxillary molars have at least three roots and four canals. Rarely, a fifth canal or more can be present. For more than a decade in my private practice, the best way to make this determination preoperatively was to utilize a series of angled radiographs and the final determination was made during treatment. With the development of cone beam computerized tomography, also known as CBCT, we can answer this question prior to treatment. However, many practitioners don't have access to a CBCT machine and I don't take a cone beam scan prior to every case. As a result, there are still teeth that will provide the occasional anatomical surprise. Tooth number two was asymptomatic, but the referral was made because a radiolucency was found on routine radiographic examination. Tooth number two had a deep filling history and did not respond to thermal testing. Based on the history and findings, number two was diagnosed as a necrotic pulp with asymptomatic apical periodontitis. The risks and benefits of root canal treatment no treatment or extraction were discussed and a good endodontic prognosis was expected. Following access into the chamber, the dentin triangle was removed with a 2008 vortex orifice opener and the glide path was enhanced with a pro glider. All instrumentation, both hand and rotary, was done with sodium hypochlorite in the root canal system. The final shape was made with a wave one gold primary file in all canals. As always, I completed an extensive search for a second canal in the mesial buccal root, but there was no evidence to indicate the presence of a second canal. The finding of interest in this case came after final shaping. When drying the mesial buccal canal to explore for the second canal in the mesial buccal root, the sodium hypochlorite came out of the distal buccal canal, indicating that these two canals were interconnected at some level of the root canal system. However, Paper points could be placed to working length in both canals simultaneously, indicating that the canals did not join directly at the apex. On the final radiograph, the mesial buccal and distal buccal canals join near the radiographic apex via a narrow fin of pulp tissue. Cases like this serve to remind me about all of the anatomical complexity that we deal with in the root canal system. I always expect to find atypical anatomy in every case I treat. With this mindset and the expectation that there are more canals than I might normally find, I am never surprised by the presence of the so-called extra canal. Hopefully, adopting this mindset will allow you to find more canals and have more confidence when doing root canal treatment.